pronounce that too, but that's great tonight. Oh, and um, if in people are not aware, the uh, state will be spraying for the mosquitoes tonight. I believe they start at 7 to 4 in the morning. Um, you can go on the website and hook up with the uh, mass, Central Mass Mosquito Control and also the state for more detailed information. Okay. I'm going to close my windows. I don't know about anybody else, but... I think it's a good idea. Well, the most important thing is to not be outdoors. Not to be outdoors, period, whatever day it is. Yeah. The, uh, I'll dress properly for it. Okay, we have seven minutes, so why don't we jump down to town administrators? Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a few things this evening. Uh, Sturbridge Auto Sales. We've been discussing their bond. Uh, automobile dealers in Massachusetts re are required to post a bond with the host municipality that issues the license. Uh, their bond has been uh, expired, revoked, and they need to get a new one by tomorrow, uh, or we notify the state of Massachusetts that their dealer's license is forfeit. So I've been in conversations with the owner for the past week or so. He is in the process of getting a new bond. I should have it tomorrow. So if not, then we'll have to make the appropriate notifications regarding his dealer's license. Um, at the last meeting, I, uh, board member Supernot asked me about a dog park and a representative. Annie Rossioli has taken that on. So mm -hmm. she will be our front person on the dog park. Um, also received an email from the Sturbridge Rotary. I guess we have a, an exchange of greetings between Sturbridge and Stourbridge UK for the past 30 years. So they are looking for a proclamation sometime. Oh, sorry. Sometime in October, probably at our October 1st meeting in October, we'll have a proclamation. I guess you've adopted this before. Yes, every year we do. Um, this should be a copy. Right. And um, what we do is we vote on it, and then Klaus Hockfeld picks it up and he mails it, and then he has a um, Skype with the Rotary Club in Stourbridge yep. to his house. So. so that'll be coming up at your next meeting in October. We're still waiting we for a representative to go and he and deliver, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, yeah. it's not gonna happen Jeff can put it in the budget, budget. <laughs> well, we can make a motion tonight and get it out of the way because I know Klaus always likes it early mm -hmm. that's up to you the, we have not prepared the proclamation so if you want to go ahead and it's up to you all well we can just say um, a motion to approve the proclamation similar to what we have written for the past 30 years okay so moved is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right. Well, we'll get it made up for a signature. And that's all I had this evening, unless there's any questions on anything. Any questions on those? Okay. The mm -hmm. action items. The, um, there's a request to concur with the appointment of Pearl Lutter as a part-time dispatch for the Sturbridge Police Department. And Ms. Luda is here this evening. You, could you please come down? You can uh, yeah. sit at the mic. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, good evening. Would you like to tell us a little bit about you? Also, this is basically for the people at home. Sure. My name is Pearl Luder. I was born and raised in Kenya. I moved here six years ago, and uh, I'm a criminal justice major in Anna Maria College in hopes of becoming a police officer. And uh, being a dispatcher is one way I would love to be one. Um, it's closer to being a police officer, but also helping the community. So it's more about that. So. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Uh, I do. Um, <laughs> It's not a question. <laughs> it's um, 
I'm very proud to see her here tonight. I had her as a student not too long ago at Quinn Sigelman, and she was a stellar student, and I'm sure she'll do very well at her job, and I'm so happy to see you here. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I see your, uh, your student, Anna Maria. Correct. Yeah, and uh, that, that's another very good uh, school to, uh, as well. And I, I encourage you to stay in your criminal justice pursuit because it, uh, it, could, it will bring a, a really good career in Thank the future. You. Okay, is somebody willing to make a motion? I'll make the motion that we um, concur with the appointment of Pearl Luda as part-time dispatcher at a starting rate of $20.80 per hour, effective 9-17-2019. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Pearl. Good luck and welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. We have an additional agenda item of another matter. Oh, so yes. Yeah. Okay, we also have, uh, as soon as I find it again, um, another request for concurrence with the appointment of Christine Bobo as the administrative okay, assistant. If I could just for the board for just a second. Oh, I'm sorry. the chairman of Criminal Justice at Anna Maria College. And I want to extend my sincerest appreciation to this board for the partnership with, that we have with Disturbance Police and your leadership. This young lady is a 4.0 student mm -hmm. and one of the rising stars in our program, and we're all very proud of her. And I just wanted to, on behalf of President uh, Rattel at Anna Maria College, thank the board for giving her this terrific opportunity for this fantastic town. Okay, thank you, and I'm, and I'm sorry, sorry I wasn't interrupt. looking up. Nice. No, thank you very much. <laughs> She's thank too you. humble. She didn't tell us she had a 4-0. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank, you. thank you. Okay, so this is a request for concurrence with the appointment of Christine Bobo as the administrative assistant for the Department of Public Works. Which We uh, had 31 applicants. Wow. Uh, a lot of good talent, a lot of, a lot of experience. Christine is one of the better ones. And uh, she has a lot of experience in office and he had great references. And uh, she's accepted the position, so we'd like to have your concurrence on it. Uh, if you have any questions for Christine. Okay, Christine, would you come down, please? Good evening. Good evening. Any questions or comments from the board? <laughs> I have another one. <laughs> it's another, this is a, two, a twofer tonight for me. Um, she's another student I had at Bay Path University. And she was an outstanding student, very professional always, um, and, and always gave above and beyond what was ever expected. So I'm happy to see you apply for this, and I'm happy to see you appoint, will be appointed, I'm assuming will be appointed <laughs> to this position. Mm -hmm. and, and to boot, you're also from Sturbridge too, so that's good. Yes. But mm -hmm. I know you'll do a fantastic job. Thank you. Anyone else? Mike? I just happen to know that, that the position that you're going into, you need tough skin, you know, and yes. I, I, I appreciate it, and just just a word of advice, just, uh, when, you know, so not everybody's going to be a nice, nice to you, and, but in general, it's very re rewarding knowing that the whole Department of Public Works is, you know, is trying to make the community better, and uh, so, just as you, as you, um, when you, when you do get those tough phone calls, just remember to breathe easy. We're going to scare her off. Final <laughs> <No. laughs> pointer. She should know what she's getting into. Butch, and you and Butch, Butch probably <laughs> warned her already. Butch knows. No, yeah, that's but, true. Public service in general, you need thick skin. Yeah, right. But it's it's not always easy, so. Right. Just, oh, she can handle. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. I'm sure. Is anyone willing to make a motion? Um, I'll make the motion to appoint um, Christine Borbo to the position of administrative assistant for the Department of Public Works. Oh, we do it this time. I, I don't have. That oh, 1964 per hour. At 1964 per hour, effective tomorrow. 
Um, I don't know, Christine, do you have to give two weeks' notice before? Yes, I do. So, the date? whatever the date. Yeah, I would start on the 30th of September. Okay, so effective September 30th, 2019. Correct. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, congratulations. And I didn't mean to scare you. Hi. Okay, 635, we do have a public hearing. Can, can I make one quick announcement? I'm oh, sorry, sure. something part of my report. Sam Evans is here this evening. Yeah. Samantha. She'll be filling in for Andrea while Andrea is oh. out. Oh. Out. Oh. She's here this evening just to introduce herself and get familiar See with See what the board. happens. Yeah, Good. <laughs> we won't scare you off, I hope. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Mike, do you have the... Uh... Oh, yes. I had it here a second ago. Uh, it's, it's on the back of one of these pages. Here. Oh, not that page. This one? No. One more. There's too much paper it's here. Quick. I got it. Okay. This ad is uh, Town of Sturbridge, in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 132, Section 40 through 46, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Sturbridge will hold a public hearing on the petition of, oh wait. That's the, that's the second one. one. <laughs> that's the wrong one. What? I had all the poll petitions. Right? Let me go back this Here way. it is. Okay. Uh, Town of Sturbridge, National Grid, and Verizon have made a joint uh, uh, petition to the Sturbridge Board of Selectmen to relocate three uh, joint occupied poles on Haines Street, beginning at a point approximately 110 feet northeast of the center line of the intersection of Haines Street and Mashpog Road, and continuing approximately 300 feet in a northeast direction. National Grid to relocate uh, poll numbers P124, 123, and uh, 122 and a half, or 122, uh, to approximately four feet off the roadway to provide new poll configuration for development of 234 Haines Street. The poll hearing will take place on Monday, September 16th at 6.35 p.m. at the Sturbridge Town Hall, 308 Main Street, Sturbridge, Mass. Okay, and could you please identify yourself? My name is Jeff Silver and I work for National Grid. Okay. And just a quick synopsis of? Uh, quick synopsis is uh, we'll actually be moving polls uh, from 126 to 122. But a lot of, uh, some of it is um, state layout. Mm -hmm. And your layout is based on these pole lines. So we're trying to get everything closer to the road so it's easier for us to work. Okay, now it says for development of 234, is that the new um, That's convenience? The old Roy Rogers? Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I stifle it, but thank you. You noticed. That's not good for you. I know, I know. <laughs> Any questions from the board? Um, on the, part of the, the poll relocations on the state highway layout, you said? Yes. Okay. And, and mass dot standard distance off the edge of uh, pavement is six feet. And on the town section of the roadway, you're going to, can gonna, you keep that six foot off the, off the edge of pavement? Or we're going to try to keep them lined up so that we yep. don't have to anchor and guy anything. Yep. Um, the State Department is aware of where the polls are going to go, and they haven't told me anything different from where they're going to go now. They're, the minimum is four feet. It is going to shift back and forth depending on how straight that line is. Mm -hmm. But the, this, the State Highway Department requires a minimum of six feet off the edge of pavement. I did uh, not know for that. Any, I, I can make that adjustment. That's location. That's that's easy to make. Yeah. So I. I, you know, I, if you, it, I appreciate it, the knowledge because I yep. didn't know that. Yeah, um, but so yeah, I'd, if you can keep it six feet off the edge, yeah, of I can. Because this is 
you know, tr cars travel through here at what 45 miles an hour or so. Oh, absolutely, so absolutely, it, so, absolutely. So that's, that's not a problem. That extra couple of feet may save a life. Uh, it's possible. It Maybe safer, I right, would say. So no, that's 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 easily easily okay. attainable. Okay, thank you. Okay. So we're going to change the order to read six feet on the order for the joint co-location because it reads four feet right now. I can change it to, to six, six feet. Yeah. That, that's easy. I think there's plenty of room there. Oh, yeah, that's and, plenty of room. And actually, a, a couple of years ago on Mashpog Road, there was the, the uh, former DPW director had some issues with the poles being too close to the edge of pavement along at Mashpog Road. So if we can, if we can do the six feet, the the problem that might occur further down the road is a lot of those existing poles are already four to four and a half feet off the off the road. I I understand. So you might have to bring it in slightly as you you know get closer to that pole line. You'll correct. Have to, correct. You'll have to you know one might be five feet, then the next one four feet. Correct. Whatever. Just got to work the angle. That's all it is. They have to be in it lined up in a straight line try to at least yeah, <laughs> yeah. we just ask okay. you do the best you can that's what i do every day yeah no, no. we do understand there are <laughs> some problems with the roads yeah okay anything else from the board okay it is a poll hearing is there anyone in the audience that has a comment or a question okay is there a motion then to close the poll hearing so move. is there a second any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you. Have a fantastic okay, evening. Okay, we do have time, so we can go back to the. We, we can have a motion to approve it, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. It's not even eight o'clock. <laughs> Zero motion. Not even seven. I know. <laughs> Zero right. motion to approve. So moved. Subject to the six feet. Yeah, subject to the six feet. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, we do have time. So the um, action item B, repair of tennis courts at Cedar Street rec area. Okay, Jeff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, given our options, I think we should go ahead and take up Lynch's proposal to, you know, cover half. Um, unless we want to back up and redo the entire court probably in the spring uh, and use a better specification for the mix um, the issue we're having there was no specifications in the asphalt which would have prevented the uh, rusting issue so if we want to repair them most expeditiously with the potential for new spots coming up in the future take up Lynch's uh, proposal to, to redo the surface for half. If we want to redo the whole thing, that's probably a springtime project and we wouldn't do anything this year. Right, and any ballpark number? It would be similar to what we did before because you'd have to yeah, take off Yeah, but this. I mean. I don't know, do we probably want, want to do concrete. I mean, the original plans mm -hmm. called for concrete. They flipped it to asphalt at the last minute and I think that's what caused problem. kind of mm -hmm. the, the lack of specificity on the product. If we, you, Mary? Uh, yes, thank you. If we chose to redo the whole thing in the spring properly with the right material, is Lynch willing to make a contribution to that? I have no idea. You know, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Right now, yeah. they're contributing half, correct, to, to the, for the repair. To, for the repair. Uh, for the yeah. asphalt, I get it. But, yeah. you know, be, obviously it'd be nice to have the concrete in the spring. But I don't want to lose Lynch's contribution to the repair either. Right. If we had to pay well, we probably money. have to go back to town meeting for the money. Oh, right, of course. Mm -hmm. We should repair it. So we should repair it. Okay, is there a motion then? I make a motion to accept the proposal from Lynch Construction to split the cost of repairing and resurfacing the tennis courts at the Cedar Street Recreation Area. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Okay, next we have the adoption of the update to the Town of Sturbridge National Hazard Mitigation. Okay. 
Okay, could you all introduce yourself, please, for the record in the audience? Thomas Ford, Chief of Police, Emergency Management Director. Peter Pelquin, Associate Planner, Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. Kevin Filchak, Emergency Management Coordinator, Town of Sturbridge. Okay, Jeff. Um, through CMRPC and the Town's Emergency Management uh, Committee, LEPC, uh, our Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan has been updated. Um, and we are here this evening. I think they, we had you out a couple months ago, talk about status and process. Uh, that plan has been completed. Uh, the 90 something page documents in your packet this evening talks about what our potential risk factors are for various natural hazards, floods, hurricanes. I think there's a couple of uh, climate change issues in there. So at this point, we'd like to have the plan adopted and um, that'll be our hazard mitigation plan and they recommend a five year refresh on these types of plans. Okay. Now we updated the um, membership, didn't we, a while yes. ago? And graciously made me the chair. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Have to earn your money somehow. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Any questions or comments on and it from the board? Perhaps Kevin or? and CMRPC has some yeah. comments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I would just I would just add to that that the idea behind the hazard mitigation plan is to reduce the loss of life and property throughout the town. It's also um, kind of a plan that gives a roadmap for the town to break the cycles of, of disaster response, disaster response. We're looking to mitigate those hazards. Um, really can't eliminate 100% fully a natural disaster, but what we can try to do is eliminate the, eliminate or lessen the impacts of the disaster. Um, one thing that I want to add too is with the current plan, it makes the town eligible for pre-disaster mitigation grants, flood mitigation assistant grants, along with hazard mitigation planning grants. Mm -hmm. So the idea to keep to keeping that plan current is that you're, it makes you eligible for all these grant monies. And I would add too that the state grants are a great tool to use to get some of the planning done or engineering studies or permitting things like things of that nature so that when you do apply for a pre-disaster mitigation grant a flood mitigation or ha hazard mitigation you have a lot of the legwork done and that way when you go for the apply for the grant uh, you'll be shovel ready or close to shovel ready for a big, a big grant from the feds or fema excuse me okay kevin anything no i would the only thing i would add would be that uh the process to to get this plan uh updated it was very helpful for us, you know, having restarted the LAPC after a few years of inactivity. So it was good to use this as a way to discuss a lot of those natural hazards that we we need to talk about. And uh, I think the process has been helpful, and CMRPC has done a very good job with the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, just because yeah. I know it's such a long document, are there any like significant changes in, in, from our previous plan that's worth highlighting for us? Or I think one of the, for a lot of the, we went through and looked at all of the hazards that we identified back in 2012, I believe, yeah, 2012, and, you know, gave a status update. Uh, our, you know, is it still an ongoing project? Did we, have we mitigated this successfully? And we've added a few new ones. For instance, the gypsy moth issue was one that we brought up that we've since added this year, um, and that's been recognized by this by this town as, as a major issue. Uh, other big one, that's one that's sticking out of my mind. Yeah, that's the, that kind of sticks out of my mind too. A lot of things were continuations or updates or improvements you know, that are kind of ongoing. This, you don't really have like a solid concrete ending for a lot of things in this, in this mitigation plan. There are some where it's more of an infrastructure project that would you know, replace the culvert and turn it into a box culvert or a nature-based type of culvert that's three-sided with the um, natural base but some of them is like inventorying shelters continually updating those uh, the supplies at a shelter with the resources we have within arms reach or MOUs that are in place um, kind of what are the effects of if the tornado takes out this shelter what's the backup plan or how do we reroute to the other shelter things things like that where there's not really 
an end all be all. It's more of an ongoing living kind of continually update and rethink uh, strategies versus this is the end all be all to solve all the problems. I, I'm not sure if that's and, feasible. And if we could add to that, you know, that's, those are items that we th think about fairly consistently. And, you know, the chief and I have been updating the SEMP plan. Uh, so some of those items that uh, he, just, he just mentioned are things that we think about every year and we try to make sure are being covered in our local plans. Okay, board. Mike? Um, yeah, I, I was at the uh, quarterly meeting where this, uh, the, the hazard mitigation plans were discussed and also there was a presentation on um, municipal uh, vulnerability plan which is which will be completed very shortly by CMRPC. And uh, the, the MVP, the Municipal Voluntary uh, Vulnerability Plan, will also uh, open the, the town up for additional funding mm -hmm. uh, to, to address our vulnerability to some of similar hazards that we have here. It's a, it's a different approach, uh, and this, um, the hazard mitigation goes through uh, MEMA and FEMA. Correct. And where municipal vul uh, vulnerability is uh, administered through uh, what state agency? Uh, uh, Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, EEA. So I, I just wanted to, to uh, bring up, the, there is some synergy or relationship between the two plans and mm -hmm. uh, so I just brought it up so I wouldn't get confused. <laughs> oh, it's okay. helpful for me. Yeah, but I, you know, both things are going on at the same time. Both plans are being uh, finalized just about the same time, which is good because we'll have two uh, up-to-date uh, plans that are address uh, uh, potential hazards of the town and our vulnerability to to uh, all kinds of different uh, situations. Okay, anything else from the board? Somebody willing to make a motion then to adopt the update? I'll make a motion to update, to, to adopt the updated um, hazard mitigation plan. Is there a second? Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to one. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Do we? Five to one. It just. Uh, oh no, five. Do we have to <laughs> sign the certification of adoption? Uh, yes. Yes, that, when. There you go. Yeah, yes. just, yeah. It'll just so we'll need to go on the town. We'll get it clean. Yeah, yeah, we just need it on the town's letterhead, signed yep, by yeah. the board, and I'll insert it into the plan and then send it back to FEMA yeah. for final approval. Yes, it's not good okay. without our signature. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have old business. Before we get to the topic listed, Priscilla, do you have any old? No. Chase? No. Mike? Not tonight. Mary? No. Um, I just had the um, question about um, the latest update from DEP on McGilpin Road. I will have to track yeah. that down. Yeah. Because I know it's been, if not this December, a year ago December, I think was our last update. Mm hmm mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. More than six months. Yeah. So it was when Leon was here, so it's been, uh, okay. it's been a while. I, I know they've been testing, though. Yeah, but we haven't gotten any report. They said they'd keep us updated. Therefore, we can update the residents. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you get a chance to get back to Mrs. Williams on uh, Charter? Not yet. I uh, put a call into the rep we had with yeah. Charter. It looks like that person's no longer there, so I've got to track down a new person. <laughs> there is a senior citizen's discount it, uh, included in the franchise, mm -hmm. but it's very onerous to apply t for that, and it only covers bas basic services. So if you wanted a premium channel, it wouldn't be applicable. Yeah, no, we went through that when we yeah. updated the thing, and they don't give much, no, no matter how much you push. So, okay, uh, but when you, uh, yeah, 
Absolutely. When I get a new person to talk to, I'll update Mrs. Williams. Yep. Okay. Well, the next one's going to take a while, so we can wait two minutes before our public hearing is scheduled at 7. Any new business? No. New business. Priscilla? No. Chase? I do have uh, something. There's a resident on the Boston Road that has contacted me. She's very upset about a travel operation going on at Boston House. And she's been complaining that there's a lot of trucks coming in and out, and she wanted to make sure that they were in compliance with the bylaws. So I thought I'd to bring it up here. She said she's contacted the town, contacted the building inspector, and she's very upset. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that everything is legal. Yes, we made him pull the necessary permits. Okay. Uh, the bylaw states that you can remove product or remove mm -hmm. material in preparation for the building of a principal structure. So to that effect, we made him pull a building permit to build a house. Uh, until that time, he was going with a driveway. He pulled a driveway permit. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so he's moving a lot of material. That's what she says. Yeah, he's moving a lot of material. So uh, eventually, he'll build a house. But he did pull the permit and pay for the permit to comply with the bylaw. Okay. Thank you. Mike? Mm -hmm. you have any new? Huh? Well, well, we can. You can be late, but you can't be early. You oh, might okay. as well finish new. Okay. I do not have any new uh, business. Okay, Mary? Um, no. And I don't either, so it is seven, Mike. <laughs> okay. Now i got to get back to the one I was reading before. Where's coming clean? Okay, this is, I, I'll reread this. It, it's uh, Town of Sturbridge in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 132, Section 40 through 46. The Board of Selectmen of the Town of Sturbridge will hold a public hearing on the petition of Michael J. Uh, Bartlett for a logging permit for 57 acres of land on 119 Holland Road and 224B Holland Road, owned by Mark D. and Joseph R. in Ward C. and Kevin J. Palmer. The hearing will be held on Monday, September 16th, 2019, at 7 p.m. at the Sturbridge Town Hall, 308 Main Street, Sturbridge, Mass. Okay, is the proponent here? Could you please come down? Mike Bartlett, Forester from Hull Forest Products. And I'm representing Hull Forest Products in this application. Okay. <clears throat> okay, could you briefly explain what it is you're going to do or want to do? Uh, we're planning on doing a timber harvest. Uh, their uh, objective was to salvage a significant amount of trees that have died from gypsy moss droughts. So forth in recent years. Uh, approximately two thirds of the harvest is on the Gulf Course side of the road or the north uh, west side of the road, I guess you'd say, and the, the other third is on the, the other side of the road, opposite. Um, so. Okay, and you do have your state forest cutting plan certificate? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's been okay, approved. Any questions, comments from the board? Okay, we have a letter from the uh, conservation department. Um, they do not have any concerns with the forestry activities. Um, it does say construction entrance tracking pad shall be established on site as necessary. Right, on the s across from the golf course there, there's an entrance to the field that they mow, I believe, annually, uh, but it's not appropriate for getting the log trucks off the road, so there we do plan on putting in riprap. That site is a little wet, wet, so to speak, so our plan is to use crane mats for the log trucks to get to the spot where the logs will be yarded. Yeah. Right, because the DPW director 
also suggest a crushed stone pad. Right, 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 right. And plan on using large <laughs> riprap there. To, and uh, protection for the edge of the road, too. Right. right. Yeah. Comments or questions from the board? Mike? Um, as, as part of our permit, we ask that, that you coordinate with our uh, school bus uh, and uh, Holland Road happens to be also uh, used heavily by our neighboring town of Holland and uh, I would ask that you also coordinate with the, uh, the Holland uh, school bus uh, yeah. uh, thing so that uh, there's no conflict there. Right. Okay, and we do have a stipulation on the hours too. Mm -hmm. And also $50,000 bond. 50,000, I'm not familiar with it. That was five. Five, yeah. We've had a $5,000 bond. Oh, well, we need it. <laughs> we have had Gosh. a 5,000, yeah, right. All ones. <laughs> We've probably had a $5,000 in bond in place consistently for about 15 yeah. years with the town of Sturbridge. Right, so. yeah, you do a lot. Okay, yeah. what else do we have on the, I didn't bring my list. Yeah, no, in the future, because we do have a list of stipulations, um, you know, dawn to dusk, only certain hours. Yeah, I, are you familiar are, that that is in violation of state statute? In what way? In that you cannot regulate hours of agricultural activities. We've well, I'm not. I I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to agree or disagree, but this has this issue hasn't come up before. We've we've regulated hours of operation because we also don't have anything on Sundays. Right. or on holidays and no forester right. has I, ever I, I, I agree. commented right. upon that so right. I'm not going to I'm not in a position to agree or disagree but we should check with council because we have a list of stipulations mm -hmm. and I was about to say in the future um, what we've typically done with the forestry plan is that you you, you add it to our agenda I, hmm. it should be in our policy book okay. because we always have the same and stipulations and eventually we just put it all on paper right uh, but if that's the case we'll have to look into it but i'm right. just saying that's always been and nothing on sunday right I nothing on that. holidays right. and saturdays i believe Full noon. it was noon only yeah. so mm -hmm. um i don't know if this are you saying the state law prohibits a municipality from having a more stringent bylaw or policy correct we'd have to see that and i'd like to yeah. see that in mm -hmm from our council yeah. that's pretty Priscilla? standard across the country yeah, yeah we've, never what, run into we've never run into any comment about it that's why I well the it. town did receive a letter from our attorney uh, maybe two years ago when we were working mm -hmm. on South Road and there I understand the town's you know objectives here and issues with that um, and there it was a case where people were showing up you know five minutes before the time or going out leaving with their personal vehicles five minutes after the time and neighbors getting upset mm -hmm. stopping them in the road you're in violation of the town bylaw I understand we'll we've worked with the town in a very reasonable manner for a long time you know I've been through this process many many times I've been with Hull for 41 years been here many times we have never had any significant issues that I'm aware of mm -hmm. that was probably the most significant a couple of years ago and there was a letter sent to the uh, chief of police and the town manager at that time and I just want to clarify it's right. not a bylaw it was a policy of the town mm -hmm. yeah. and we were under the um, impression that we could regulate, regulate. hours of operation For so it, it's worth clarifying well, part of your right to farm uh, it's worth no I'm not I'm not going to try to <laughs> yeah, debate you I, I, I don't I, know it's I, worth I, it's yeah. worth getting a definitive right. answer uh, on that right. sure right. Right. Uh, sure the, we can do that mm -hmm. yeah. does the uh, any other? Does, it, does the board's right to uh, control nuisance uh, su supersede that if there is a nuisance? Uh, I don't know. I think there's certain exceptions when it comes to agricultural yeah, there are, activities. There are some exceptions, but yeah. Yeah. but uh, like uh, we want to work with you. I mean, that's yeah. let's no, not I mean, let's not get it go well. there. We, um, you know, we do it for the neighbors because right, there have I been understand. a few yeah. occasions, not with Hull, but right. Uh, right. You know, people show up an hour earlier. Yeah. Nope. Sun's yeah. not quite up. <laughs> yes, I understand. And it's pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. any other questions from the board? Any one in the audience? It's a public hearing. Okay, could you please come up and use the mic? It's for the people at home. Yeah. 
Okay, and could you give your name, please? Yeah, my name is John Cowett. I live in Allen Hill Road. I'm new to this, so I, I have a few concerns. Uh, lot lines, how, how do we know, well, how do they know where they're going to be cutting? Has that been surveyed and that sort of yeah, thing? The boundaries have been flagged. The trees that are to be harvested have been painted with paint. Oh, okay. And so I guess if you feel there's an issue, please let me know. But the lines as we found them were matched the maps that we have. There's physical evidence in terms of barbed wire, old stone rail fences, and so forth, and pins on the corners. And so. Yeah, because I've been out there, it's really thick. The wood's really thick in there. So. Well, if you didn't see any blue paint on your property, well, not, not, not recently. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and that's the, why we notify the abutters is to give them a chance. Is there any uh, impact as far as uh, wetlands and that sort of thing? There are wetland crossings on the jobs that have been used before in previous harvests that we plan to use uh, the crane mats again to protect the integrity of those crossings. And so, so you, you're just going to individually cut, you're, you're not going to clear cut the whole thing? Right? Correct. There are spots where in certain, you know, one particular acre, the vast majority of the trees are dead. So in those right. cases, we're going to yeah. cut them. But, cut them up, yeah. but no, we're not clear cutting by what would be in the forestry term clear cut. Okay, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else from the public? Okay, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, somebody willing to make a motion? No. I'll make a motion to give a logging permit to 119 Holland Road and 224B Holland Road to Michael J. Barber. Second. second. Any discussion? Um, I just want to know if oh. it's um, subject to the conditions, the conditions we've always we imposed. Always imposed. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Absent, being told that okay. we can't. Any discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Okay, five zero. And maybe you can make a copy for Mr. Bartlett of our conditions. I think it's in our policy book. Yeah, it should be. Because yeah. it isn't a bylaw. No. But we finally put it, we pulled yeah. them together instead of so we're consistent. With remember them all the time. <laughs> Did that include coordination with Holland? Oh, <coughs> it's their motion, so. What? I didn't hear it. Mike also wants to add not just our bus coordinator, but Holland, so we can put to that on. Ask, I asked them to coordinate yeah. with, yeah. Coordinate coordinate with, the, with the school buses so that there's no conflict between logging trucks and school buses. That's, that makes sense. Yeah, a lot of students. Right, right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, in light with this, I know it's not, uh, it's just the convert. No, you're all set. Good night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the conversation that came up about um, state uh, rules and regs and whatever, agricultural and whatever. Okay, so I guess I have another question is, in this case, how can we do conservation rules that are st more stringent than the state conservation rules? Well, I mean, he's not talking conservation. I understand he's that. Farming. I understand that, but if we can't impose a policy on on that, I guess my question now becomes: How can we do it on something else, or can we? I guess while you're asking, you can go stricter than the state. You can't go less stricter than the state, like our per test. The floor. So this is stricter in a sense. Yeah, but this, this is agriculture, which is exempt from most things. And so we don't know if he's correct. We yet. don't know, I, mean, I, know. I, it, I know. Yeah, I know. I think yeah. the key is it's an agricultural operation and they have special treatment under the laws in most states. Yes. So it's different than if you wanted to build a subdivision or if you wanted to build a commercial property. Agriculture has its own set of rules, okay. but we will get some yes. information from and KP that. Law. Thanks. But, Mike. But there, there is uh, substantial. Uh, the, uh, if an agricultural operation is creating a public nuisance, 
that is uh, most likely not, ex it, in most cases, it's not exempt. If you cannot create by agricultural activity a public nuisance. It depends on the nature of the public mm -hmm. nuisance. Aerial spraying is usually exempt. Right. Right. Um, dust is usually exempt. Those things are inherent to an agricultural operation. But operating uh, equipment in hours where depends on. I well, we will definitely in a, having <laughs> yeah. worked in agricultural states. I, I get it. I don't not yeah. familiar with Massachusetts yeah. right yeah. to farm law. This was we'll the have first. To get, yeah, this was the first that anyone yeah. in at least since I've been sitting yeah. here, to my recollection, has challenged our regulation of hours. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So, I, I will yeah, find I out. Agree. So, so I agree. we need to get the information. Yeah. Okay, we're still under new bus uh, old nope. business, sorry. Sir extension. Jeff? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Board. Uh, we have a proposal from the owner of Pine Lake RV Park regarding a sewer extension down Route 15. Mr. Moreau is here this evening. Um, as I put in the packet, there's a number of issues here. Uh, there is the original proposal for Mr. Moreau was to build an on-site sewage treatment plant. And that's what was approved. He has his DEP permits mm -hmm. and that is in, is in design. He approached the town five or six weeks ago about a direct connection to the line in Farquhar Road through a force main. And that led to a conversation about building a six inch main public main down route 15 for roughly the same amount of money between construction and, and privilege fees and entry fees and so forth. So the proposal on the table and Mr. Moreau is in full support of this proposal is that he would build a six inch main uh, to his property and it would be a public main that the town would own and maintain after it's built we would oversee design we would oversee construction we would accept it when it's complete and it would be one mile of new sewer extension down route 15. Uh, the question before the board in in reality is how do you how are we classifying this property for sewage privilege fees and in the packet i put together a spreadsheet if this was classified as strictly residential between the privilege and, en and entry fees, it would equal over $2.8 million in fees that he would owe the town to connect. Um, given that it's, and then in the sewer bylaws, there's a series of different classifications. So in a commercial property that has, that's using sewer, and we don't have a good water estimate, because a, a commercial property with town water would pay based upon water consumption, but we don't have a good water number, so I use the 31,000 gallon a day capacity of a sewage treatment plant, that's the design capacity, to come up with the privilege and entry fee if we were to treat this par project as a commercial property, he would owe a privilege and entry fee rent between 1.2 and $1.3 million, in addition to his cost to connect at Farquhar Road. So there's a series of issues before us tonight, but the proposal on the table is to work with Mr. Moreau to build a six inch public main down Route 15 at his cost. We would, if that's acceptable to the board, we would have KP Law draw up an agreement between the town and Mr. Moreau to outline responsibilities, liabilities, indemnifications, and who, and approvals throughout this entire process. Mr. Moreau is here this evening if you want to answer any questions, but I'll be happy to answer questions. It's a very complex issue. There's no, there's no, there's nothing in the bylaw that says an RV park gets assessed X. Um, and even if we were to con consider it residential, would you consider it a multifamily pros project which has half this privilege fee of a regular residential unit? So there's a series of not ambiguities, but determinations for the board to make in this process. Okay, questions from the board? Priscilla? Um, am I reading this correctly um, when I say, um, when I read this and it says that you're saying in lieu of payment of additional mm -hmm. fee privilege and entrance uh, fees, is that right? Yes, because okay. if you were to classify this as the non-residential developed without town water, because we don't know his water number, mm -hmm. right? 
I his entry fee would be about 1.2 million. Right. I thought that's he's projecting what you're to pay more than double that to get the line to his property. Right. I thought that's what you were saying. I just wanted to be sure. Yes. That's all. Okay. Um, I haven't changed my opinion since last time we talked about this, and um, I spoke to um, Butch Jackson today to ask about a six-inch line, the adequacy, and he said it would be adequate. I also asked him about the smell because someone said something about odor. I heard it through the grapevine, and um, he said that that is not an issue and would not be an issue, and with all that they have today, it, if it they can mitigate anything like that and then he told me about a couple of spots in town where they had a problem and it's all it's been resolved um, we talked about in the past of a senior center possibly going on that property I know it's out there it's maybe a couple of three four years out the road but the sewer line would already be there and it certainly is an opportunity I would like to I, I first of all mr. Moreau thank you for your generosity for your offer uh, for even wanting to do this um, because I think that the money we would put into this because we've held back on this project for years because we never could afford to, to do the project that that money can go to fields we've been talking about fields for years and years and years and it's always been a question of cost um, I agree with the no connection fee as, as the town administrator has said um, I think this is a one-time deal and I think it's a good deal for the town because I think once that sewer line goes down, I think you're going to see the growth in another way. I think you're going to see people wanting to come in, some small businesses, obviously. We're not talking box stores on that strip because it's not big enough. And I think that we'll get it back in user, in user fees and everything. Um, I personally think, I want to I say to you, thank you again. Um, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I, for one, appreciate something that no one has ever done and um, thank you for even thinking about it okay, comments chase yeah I, i'd like to thank mr merlin too he's done a lot for the town of starbridge and uh, it is appreciated to me i feel like you got route 15 and you have five bar road i do strongly feel that there should be some time connection fee now what that fee is, I'm not, I don't have it in my mind right now. If he does run a line all the way down Route 15, I feel a break should be given. But you look at the properties on Route 15 right now that could use this line, I don't know if $1.2 million is a wash for the town. I don't know if it's a $1.2 million beneficiary for the town. So I, I, I am for a tight fee. Mike? Um, Massachusetts law requires that uh, sewer fees are fair and equitable. Uh, and, you know, I really appreciate uh, Mr. Morrow's uh, efforts and, and so forth. But I, I do have to say that uh, recently, within the last two years, uh, the town has, um, you know, uh, on, on another project has said that uh, we would not waive any fees and would not contribute to the construction of a sewer extension. So, you know, being fair and equitable is difficult in this case. Um, I, as much as I'd like to um, say, yeah, let's, let's give uh, the RV park, a, you know, a, a reasonable, reasonable break. The board has uh, s been steadfast uh, <coughs> recently on not doing so on another project, and I, you know, I, I've got a problem about being fair and equitable about our sewer fees and uh, and charges, and uh, and. Uh, I, I guess there's, yeah. I, I don't know where to go uh, with this because I would like, love to see this project go, but I'm thinking about fairness and equity. Mary? Um, well, I'll also begin by saying I had an opportunity to take a tour of the proposed RV uh, park with our town administrator, and for those watching, it is 
truly going to be a, a real asset to Sturbridge. It's beautiful. He's had a lot of experience around the country uh, building similar RV um, sites. And I hate to even call it an RV site. I mean, it's. I, I would like to go there for the week in myself. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very it's very nice. And he has properties in the South and in Arizona and Vegas. So um, certainly a quality project. Um, I'll begin by backing up a little bit and saying I would like to see one of the alternatives to tie in become a reality for a few reasons, as opposed to an on-site, um, which he, which I believe he already has the DE. EP permit for that and it perks and it it could be a go that way as well but one thing is when we built a bigger sewer plant so our wastewater treatment plant at town meeting we we got voters saying you know we're going to add neighborhoods on to bring down the cost in the long run to the current rate payers and we really haven't brought on very many mm -hmm. to date and it's it's a very expensive um, town water and sewer bill for a, a lot of people. I'm on town services. Um, but I have a lot of people saying, you know, and to the point where other neighborhoods really don't want to tie in because it's a big expense. So if he can tie into Fakra Road or extend the sewer down 15, that's not simply a benefit to bring in a business or two. Because I kind of on chases, I, I don't know how many businesses that's actually going to benefit at that end, but it certainly will benefit the current um, sewer users. Mm -hmm. And I know in the past when we set the rate, we've tried to soften it with Barbara um, by you know making it a little bit, little bit less. And she had told us, well, we're not gonna meet our obligation. So um, I would like to see one of those two things happen. What I told Jeff is, um, for me, it's, it's the oversight if we extend down 15. My preference would have been if the town's going to assume maintenance and repair and it's going to be the town's, I would have preferred the town building it because it's going to be our responsibility and overseeing, more than just overseeing construction. And I was told that by, in terms of the timelines, it, it wouldn't suit mm -hmm. the, the, the applicant. Um, because what we have to keep in mind is then it's gonna be the town. So if there's any breaks or anything, it's on the town. Mm -hmm. So my thing would be, if the town's not gonna build it, I would like to approve the contractor. I would like to have the kind of oversight if things go wrong in the construction, which you know a lot of times I kind of want to airtight that the town's not held, you know, responsible because I'm a little bit uncomfortable with having a private part pri and I know that you know Jeff explained that there is a lot of um, private public partnerships these days to get infrastructure accomplished so I can appreciate that but I guess I'm a little uneasy with a, pri a private applicant building it and then it becomes the town's and it's our responsibility for the future and the repair and everything so I want to make sure that it's done consistent with how Mm -hmm. We would want it done. That's my thing. I, as in terms of the connection fee, I'm a little bit. Go over that again. In terms of, we don't have anything in our sewer laws right now in our sewer bylaws that says this is how an RV park is treated. I get it. Right. Okay. So, um, what would are we waiving the connection? Explain Farquhar Road again mm -hmm. versus extending the line in terms of what kind of benefit we would give um, the RV park. Because we need to be consistent. We can't right. give preferential treatment mm -hmm. um, to one and, and call that fair and equitable. Right. So I honestly, I just need mm -hmm. you to go over that again right. for me. Okay. So if he were to connect directly to Farquhar Road, and, and, and I believe that the, the commercial classification of this project is probably appropriate. It's zone commercial, it's tax commercial. So that's probably appropriate. Um, and in that event, based upon his sewer usage, the 31,000 gallons a day, and this spreadsheet needs to be updated, it says, says 30,000, it should be 31,000. Mm -hmm. So there's a few more dollars in there. Um, he would pay for the direct cost to Farquhar Road on a, on a private force main. It would be his alone. And in addition to the cost of constructing that, he would be liable for the privilege and entry fee of roughly $1.2 million. 
in addition to the construction of that. And how do we how do we come up with the one point three? It's that's based upon the units, units. Okay. in his thirty one thousand gallon a day plant. Okay, yeah, that's mm -hmm. I thought. We should, according to the bylaw, we should use a town water assumption number, but we don't have that. There's not good numbers for the use of town water, so I went with the capacity of the plant. Now, according to Mr. Moreau, his actual sewer volume is somewhere around 17 to 20,000 gallons a day. Uh, Ty and Bond agree with that, but his design capacity of plant's 31, and that's what I used for this, this exercise. So if you were to build a private force main to Farquhar Road, he would, that would be entirely his cost. Do we know what that is, roughly? It's somewhere around a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Not much, not that, a little less, okay. And then he would be responsible for the privilege and entry fee. And that's actually specified in our bylaws. I, I, right, when you went like this, from a million, does well, that mean, fi I know that, but is it like 500, 750, I'm just curious. Uh, my best guess would be in the four hundred thousand dollar range to construct a force main. I mean, if you figure, uh, it's only four tenths of a mile. Hmm. It's not that far. Okay, thank you. You all set? Well, no, no. no so no, then, no. if if I just, wanna, I just want both scenarios. Right. So he is offering. Uh, to build the public main for $2.4 million, which is more than double the entry fee and the privilege fee. So the, the thought process is he has more than paid the fee by the donation of public infrastructure. And that's in a sense what's, gonna, what's happening here. He's building and donating to us infrastructure designed for the public, designed to our specification, and handed to the public at the end of construction. Can I can I ask a question? I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, what would? Let me put okay, it on. nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, oh, Jesus Christ! No. I feel like I'm selling encyclopedias. <laughs> <laughs> They, they don't, don't use they them don't anymore. Want to be, they don't want to be selling those. <laughs> Warren Buffett. Okay. Let me just ask this before you give it like a, a little. No. What would be the benefit to the um, to you? I, I understand that you're you're trying to give infrastructure to 15, but what would be the benefit to you of um, the second alternative? Um, extending Route 15 versus tying into Faca Road. Is there also a benefit to your business taking that route? Because I mean, I know it, it's an extra 1.2, so there's, I know you're being altruistic, but there's gotta be a, a business reason that you would prefer the, the second. Uh, my primary belief is that that would, the run down Route 15 is a very straightforward run. You've got the town right away uh, around along the roadside. I believe the town does own the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would make my life a lot easier. In other jurisdictions, we've had situations where we've had to get easements from our neighbors to run uh, an underground board sewer line. And uh, you could have a 99% vote of people saying yes, that would be a great idea, and one negative vote, and you're out of slits. You're, you you wouldn't be able to do it because mm -hmm. that property would be integral to the line, and the property owner would say, no, I don't want to give you an easement to run your sewer line. So while I haven't looked at the exact line and whether I would need such easements, it's possible that I would. So that was my initial thinking as to why to support the town. Okay, how many easements do, do you even know roughly what you, the amount of property owners that you would have to go through? We could probably, in thinking it through, just take the line down the road. And I would imagine uh, that might be straightforward with zero easements. Mm -hmm. But originally I was thinking of boring, which is really a lot easier and quicker and cleaner. And if we were to bore, 
then it would be advantageous to go underneath someone's property if that property made for a more direct route. And so I haven't quite done the math on whether that's two or three easements or whether they're even necessary. But that's what I had run into before where, okay, the most direct route, we can go under this person's property with a boring line, zero disturbance to that property. But there's, you know, you would need an easement to do that. So in trying to wade through all those alternatives, I then thought, well, a six inch line going down Route 15 would benefit the town. And in consideration for that, it's a question of do I really want to pay for just a fee to tie in or would I be better off doing something that could eventually benefit the town in the future with, of course, this very board having the, the power to control what would go on that future. So tonight, it's really just give me the line and the future is in your hands to decide what, if anything, you would want to allow to tie into it. So I started thinking, you know, it really would be a, a, and, a and what's driving it overall is that I really, even though I'm, in the sewer treatment business. Oh, I'm so, I apologize. Turn this off. Okay, there we go. Even though I'm in the sewer business already <laughs> in, Mass, in uh, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. where we have a 332 space park sitting on about the same acreage as this current park with almost the exact same sites, and even though that uh, that treatment facility that we built there is operating like a dream. I mean, the word sewer never comes into my, my realm. It just operates really well. And so, but nevertheless, uh, I'm still dealing with the DEP in Pennsylvania on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just don't like being in that business necessarily. It's a, it's an, it, it, and it's not that expensive in all honesty. My estimates here for running a, a plant similar to what we have in Pennsylvania, I've heard estimates of a low of 100,000 and a high of 150,000 to have the license operator and the professional engineer oversight of what we're trying to do. That's a pretty hefty annual fee. And if I could get away from that with a one-time fee and have a one-pay uh, line go in, that would benefit the town if you so choose. I can say this. The $200,000 a year I'll be paying in occupancy tax is a good start towards a ball field or something. I can say that rather than uh, the in adding additional flow, I would say that our average flow over the course of the year in that we're closed four months would be well below 30,000 gallons. That's peak flow at a peak time. And in our park here, our peak flows are about 17 to 20,000 gallons per day on 4th of July, Memorial Day, and Labor Day. And for the rest of the time over the year, we probably have average flows of 10 or 12,000. Nonetheless, and I, I haven't done my homework, how much do I have to pay to, for that flow to go into your system? And does that benefit the system here? And is the plant here that I believe was recently expanded to 1.1 million gallons per 1. day? 1.3. 1.3, excuse me. Yeah. You know, could it, would it function better if it had that flow? And would that fee that I pay on, an in, on a monthly basis for years and years and years and years be an annuity to the town that would be a real benefit? Regardless of who ties in or who doesn't. And again, that's your decision. My decision is simply this would be a overall a positive step, I think, for uh, giving back to the community 
putting the community in a position to you know make a decision as to the growth or no growth and for me economically given that I'm out from under the annual fees of paying my own guy to run my own plant uh, in exchange for paying whatever my usage is to the city to benefit their plant I said all in all I, I like this idea it's I think if you really were to crunch the numbers it's very close mm -hmm. it's really very close there's a lot of uh, subtle factors involved in running the plant my own labor towards running the plant versus not being involved mm -hmm. you know I probably have to have two or three key employees that really understood how to manipulate the plant to get it to really hum right if I had my own facility mm -hmm. and so you add it all up and crunch all the numbers through and it's to me kind of a push and so I say, well, if it's a push, what's the best way to give back to the community? And I think I'll just divert just for a minute. What we've done there, and Mary has seen it, and Jeff's seen it, Chase has seen it. What we have done there is take A property that had sites like this and sites mm -hmm. well, that's your homemade pier right on the, the lake mm -hmm. and uh, we've taken that property and we are going to totally transform a property that will turn into generating two hundred thousand dollars a year in occupancy tax employment for summer use looking for neat places to be and adding the essence of family values and family fun to an area that was at cottages with interiors that look kind of like that so we have really rehabilitated it and tried to make it as nice as it possibly can be and it will be nice. It will. Have a beautiful pool exactly like this. This is the pool we built at our park outside of Las Vegas. We will have landscaping. <coughs> similar to the landscaping at our interest, uh, entrance in Virginia Beach, which is what that is. We will have actually even a better putt-putt golf course, pickleball court, fitness center, billiard room. Extra, uh, the fitness center will be great. And we'll have a quadrangle gathering area with two fire pits similar to our park outside of uh, Palm Springs. So we're really trying to elevate that area that was troubled and we're on track and so the decision tonight isn't really about what the future is going to be or what this might lead to it's really just I'm here to say I'd really like to give back to the town I'd like to get out of the sewer business <laughs> and <laughs> I think people can probably agree with that one and uh, you know economically does it make sense for me you bet does it make the operation of that park better and safer and all around uh, uh, beneficial? Yes, because it's one last thing I won't have to worry about. And so that's really why I'm here tonight, just to try to, can we just you know, really stay focused? Uh, and, and fair and equitable is certainly a valid concern, but were those other uh, businesses or other uh, establishments did they have they did they go into an area and really turn it around as radically as I'm going to turn this property around are they paying two hundred thousand dollars a year just in the occupancy tax 
and are they willing to put a couple million bucks up to get a line to go down a corridor that when I first came here, when I first came here it was with my sister way back when and we visited Sturbridge like tourists and I, w I was struck by the town so here I am today. But when I came here two years ago I talked to the town about running a line to the nearest manhole uh, right across the street here. And unfortunately, uh, the director of public works said that uh, it just wouldn't be possible. And so I dropped it, and that's when we got our DEP permit and decided to build our own facility, which I've done. I, I, have, I have that very facility. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it through, and I'm saying, gosh, here's an opportunity to really create a win-win situation. And I really think it will benefit the town from both my fees that I pay on a monthly basis, the use of uh, better utilization of your expanded facility, and just the uh, stability that a system like that will lend to the operations of the park. You all sign on your... No, thank you for all that. I just, the only thing I wanted. That was a long answer. <laughs> no, no, it was helpful. I, I apologize. Mean, <laughs> to get I the really, question. I, I really for me, for me. I'm just passionate. I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about what I'm doing, and we're getting so close. We're, we're making progress, you know, and it's, it's the availability of parks to build my own plant that has, that takes so long to bring in from Germany that opened up this window to re-examine this issue. Because I realized all of a sudden, I, the, the sewer guy that's going to, the guy that's going to build my plant for me said, the earliest we can get this going is March and April. And let's get our cement in the ground now, and then we'll have it all ready. And then when the parts arrive, we'll be able to piece it together and get you running by March or April. And so, I had originally projected opening in October, which would have been a stretch. So it opened up this window of a breather, if you will. Let's take a fresh look at this issue. And that's where Shane Moody from the water company came in and talked with me and said, this is such a win-win, I think you should take a look at it. I do. That's when I met with Mr. Bridges, and he was uh, a breath of fresh air, <laughs> unlike the reception that I had two years ago when it was like, no, I, I really don't think uh, we can do anything with this concept of you running your own forced main line. Because I just uh, entertained that for our park in Arizona. So. No, as I said, thank you for the, all that. I, I did want to know how it was beneficial to you in particular. And you were honest. You don't want to be in the sewer business. That's why you don't want to self-contain. And in terms of which tie-in is preferable. It's less um, problematic because there's no easements. It's a straight line. So that, that is what I was looking for. Good. In terms of being, you know, I, I've already said my preference. I would like to see it either work with Farquhar or with Route 15. But I just want to make clear, you know, fair and equitable. It, it doesn't turn for me on, you know, the amount of your occupancy or, or that type of thing because then it would be, tantamount to us saying, well, when we're making decisions about who can tie in, we're going to favor a bigger operation who's going to bring the town more money than, say, a smaller business. And to me, that's kind of the antithesis of fair and equitable. So I just wanted to sit, put that on the table. I, I know what you were trying to say. It, it, it would benefit the town, but it certainly can't turn on, on the size of the project um, because smaller businesses can't be treated differently because they're a smaller business. So I just, I just want to put that out there. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do with Chase's concern about the 1.3. What, uh, no, go how many, um, I know we don't know exactly, but we say it's up to us. It really isn't. It, it's zoned, no, it's zoned, it's zoned for what yeah. it's zoned for. Mm -hmm. And we they'll don't get make to those tie decisions. in. Yeah, that's, that's really not up to us. The money is mm -hmm. not up to us whether the increased amount goes to a field or whatever. That It goes into our general, general. fund and it would get voted on at town meeting. So I don't, it, it really isn't in the Board of Selectmen's hands. So I just want to ask 
we've got um, how, how many, how much benefit does it give to Route 15? Because right now the Shepherd Parcel, we may want to try to do something with it, but right now it's got a conservation restriction and mm -hmm. that's the way it sits right now. Um, and then we have the Army Corps of Engineers land. Mm -hmm. How many other private owners in that one mile or it's longer than a mile? Well, I think that the way I've looked at this and, it, and I think it's different than what a couple of you are looking at it. I'm looking at this as the first leg mm -hmm. of a uh, line to get to pilot, yep. right. to get to that interchange They're a little of pilot, bit closer. Mm -hmm. right? So there only may be a couple properties from where it is now at Main Street to River Road, but you have others further down the line. And the reality of this situation is if you don't, if, if you take Mr. Moreau out of the mix of a future sewer customer that will participate in a line down Route 15, you have now degraded your possibility of ever getting that line down Route 15 because you've taken one of your bigger users out of the mix. If you say go, go to Farquhar Road direct, there's no reason for him to participate through betterments or otherwise in a future line down Route 15. So in, what, the way I look at this is there may only be a couple of users between here and there right now, but it's the first leg of a, of a process to get it to further down the road. I would like to know, that was one of my questions, how many parcels there are though in that area? And then further on, I know you're probably more futuristic than I am, but first of all, Mr. Morrow, I'd like to um, echo the thought of everyone here. You know, thank you for coming to Sturbridge and it is gonna be beautiful, no doubt about it. And you've put a lot into it, okay. But even further on down the road now, Pause Plaza, they've already put a uh, plaza. Mm -hmm. that, they've already put this in. There aren't that many uh, parcels on the other side. Um, there's um, the uh, Kelly Road, the... Um, Kelly Road is past that. Yeah, but I mean, that's what I mean. You know, he, uh, Jeff's futuristic saying if we get this in, then we can do this and that. Um, where Sabaros was, they're putting, it, putting in their own new thing. We have the um, Bennett's Road place and everything. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see the parcels, you know, what could be, because on the right-hand side, it's highway, so we know yeah, not no much, nobody's going there. Um, but I do have a problem, and I am not in agreement with waiving any fees. We don't waive them for other people. Um, it isn't fair, and like Mike said, there is another project that asked to have their fees waived, and we said no. And I do agree with Mary on you can't say one project's better than another project. They're all good projects in bringing things into town. Um, I would like to see more numbers on projections as far as um, what the uh, fees might be on the storage. You can estimate based on our rates now and on the um, projected flows. Also, yeah, monthly, yeah, monthly costs. yeah, the, yeah, for because Barbara has all that um, information. But I am really not um, in favor of waiving any fees whatsoever. Okay. Priscilla, um, I'm hearing about other projects, but maybe I forgot something. Um, can these other projects, did they give anything, like Mr. Moreau's giving the sewer line, did they give us anything like that, that we said, no, we're not waiving your fees? Because um, I forgot if they did. I don't recall anybody else doing this. No, not because every, every project is different, and somebody can't say, I'll give you this if you give me that, because not everybody has the money to give mm -hmm. for a sewer line and everything. But you do have to look at the projects. Yes, the other project would um, bring in fees to the town. Um, quite a bit, of, quite a few fees, money rather. But, um, you know, that's even like people, you know, single family homes, people are gonna say, can you waive my fee? You know, you waive this for this person and this person had money, so you waived it. You know, you get, 
you get all that. So I'm what just kind of to be, let, me, let me be clear. What is the let amount me be of the clear. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. the, the way I'm looking at this is he's, if he were to connect, he'd pay 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. He's willing to double that. Yeah, exactly. So in terms of infrastructure value, so I don't see, I see us waiving a fee in addition to a $2.4 million contribution to our public infrastructure. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm talking yeah. about. I'm not talking about waiving his fees and getting no return on, on the value. I'm talking about waiving additional fees beyond a $2.4 million construction of public infrastructure. That's, that's my and, point. And what kind of fee are we, what kind of fee are we? $1.2 million. Dollars. We're this. talking about 1.2 in fees. It, it, this doesn't, you know. I, so it's like 2.4 versus 3.6. Right. I, I, I'm not saying you're offering this. Don't, don't get worried. <laughs> but what, what in, in other words. <coughs> well, if you were if you were to say, I know yes, what you're saying, you're, you're equating. This. I know he's doubling it. So you're saying that's the quid pro quo for the fee. Yes, basically. I get that. Very much so. And I, I understand these two are saying, but it, we still waiving a fee, if you will. So we're debating 2.4 or would would you both be on board? with having him build the line if there was some fee attached? I guess that's my question to the well, other I don't board wanna, members. Yeah, but some fee, but we uh, okay. need some dollar figures on that. If we're saying some fee, well, what would that be? I am really reluctant to start a precedent of waiving fees for the sewer. And the same with water, although you've got your own site. Um, Chase? Yeah, we keep talking this 2.4, 2.4. 400,000 of that is just in case something goes mm -hmm. wrong. This could be a lot less than 2.4. Mm -hmm. So we don't, I mean, we, we're going off a kind of an inflated number. Well, it's based, it's tie and, number, tie and yes. bonds number based upon recent sewer line construction costs. But it they've could seen be a lot less than 2.4. So if it was less, so well, I'm not sure I, I get your point. Well, so if it's two, to, so if it's two million, yeah, it's what's not your as point? much of a I'm benefit. Not, is that what you're? Oh, so it's know. not well, a benefit. Well, we keep saying he's going to run a 2.4 million dollar line. We, we don't. We are potentially not running a 2.4 million dollar line. So we run a two million dollar line. I'm not sure I get the point here. It's still, well, it's, a, four, it's still it's free. Four, it's, I guess we value the properties differently. You value that as a one point. You'd waive the $1.2 million I fee would. for 15. I don't see the properties from the town hall to where he's going as $1.2 million. With it, there's essentially three. Shepherd parcel, we don't know if we can build. The residential house, this line, an E1 pump is not gonna tie into this line. This is a much different yeah. line than what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a small pump, pump station, station to tie into this line. That yeah. residential house is not gonna to wanna to build a pump station to tie into this line. So essentially, we're talking about one property that this line would benefit. Which one? Now, the, day, the old days in. Okay. Now, okay, that, that's what now, I was after when I asked now, Jeff. That, I we wanted value to... running sewer by the old days in? More than $1.2 million check to the town? That's a personal, that's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, some, a lot of this can be personal, but I totally think that, um, is it a precedent? Yes, it is a precedent. Are you setting a precedent? You bet you are, and in my opinion. And since I've sat here, nobody's given anything like this, okay? They've given land, yes. They've given a few different things, but not to this value. And all I've heard for the time I've been on this board from within the community, not just this board, but in different, we've had studies on 15, and a study and another study, and another study till it's ad nauseum on 15. And here's an opportunity. And what I'm hearing now is, well, you know what, there's not that much. I'm not sure, I'm conflicted. I can't imagine anybody out there not being conflicted because we hear, we have these meetings, we go to the public house, they have a meeting presentation from CMRPC, we have other studies, and yet um, here's an opportunity and instead of, I, I feel instead of looking at the opportunity for what it can bring for us as a community, aside of what it's going to do for Mr. Moreau's uh, entity, um, 
I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm totally lost in the shuffle. As far as the uh, wastewater treatment plant, I agree with you because I know, I know the mobile park on Kelly Road. And um, at one time, they were approached to tie in if, if ever we had a sewer line. But they couldn't wait because they had a DEP order and they had to either do it or be shut down at that point. So they had to build their own wastewater treatment plant, but it's not cheap. It's not cheap to build it and it's not cheap to maintain it and they have to have full-time employee. I, I get exactly what you're saying because with their 200 homes, it's a, it's a, it's a costly uh, adventure. So this is a win for, in my opinion, for everybody. And I just hope, I just hope it happens, but I don't know. This, this same issue, had, was, this property also was under an order. Yes. To, to build yes. A, its own plant yes. or somehow get to, and that was an order issued in 2009 yep. mm -hmm. by the yep. DEP. Yep. And guess what happened? Nothing. 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 Yep. Man. And when I came here two years ago, I attended a, rest, a breakfast about, hey, what would be best for this Route 15 corridor? And the consensus was clear, outdoor recreation. How are you going to attract outdoor recreation, which would be a great use for that corridor? Well, here I am with the outdoor recreation personified, an RV park. Can't get any more outdoor recreation than that. And what other collateral businesses are you going to attract? Well, they're all going to want mm -hmm. sewer. So if, if the study done by that firm, and I forget the PR firm that did that, and if it really is an interest in the town's uh, belief to make that a recreation quarter, then here's a good leg up. I think that's how Jeff sees it. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself just am trying to bring it down to just tonight's decision on this property because we'll have the opportunity to visit any future growth or future development or future fees at that time. But tonight you say, gee, is this a fair quid pro quo for what, I'm, what we're discussing mm -hmm. to build the line versus the benefit to the town? And only you guys can make that decision. I can't, so. Yeah, I'm still hung up on um, waiving any fees. Anyone else in town on sewer paid for it. Um, the um, only ones, the betterments were reduced when Hobbs Brook went in because they put it in, but the people along the way put it in. Um, the fees are set by our bylaws, and I'm not even sure the Board of Selectmen has the right to waive fees if they're in the bylaw. Mm. Uh -huh. I mean, we're supposed to adhere to the bylaws, so we probably would need to, mm -hmm. we to can find out. check on that. Mm -hmm. um, is the board, does the board need more information? Would we like to table this to our next meeting? Or does I, the board? I don't. I, I would think he's got a time factor. Do, I, I mean, it, you're going to hit the bad weather pretty soon. <laughs> you know? But you, I mean, if we voted tonight, Priscilla, I don't think it would fly. I don't think it would fly anyway. Let well, me ask you a question. Priscilla, also, um, if we need more information, we need more information. We can't be you know, pushed just because somebody's in a hurry. I didn't say he was. I, I, did, I don't want to put that in his mouth. I said it. I asked okay. if he was in a hurry. I'm not saying he said it. So I just want that clear in the record that Mr. Moreau didn't say it. It was my thought. That's well, all. Well, can I ask a question? Am I correct that we really wouldn't know what the privilege fee would be to extend um, the, it's 1.3 to, to go Farquhar Road, and I can appreciate what he's saying. He's going to have to possibly go to landowners, and I'm not sure how I... Or it's, only, it's really uh, under, under that to build my own plant. I, right, I, I, I'm following you. But I'm still back to, we don't really, we, we can't really assess this because we don't have, we don't address RVs in our bylaws. Right. Well, you're assessing so, it as a commercial user a commercial use of, water, right. of wastewater services. Yeah. But I, I have, know, but I have I no. It's no different yeah. than a bank. No, I, I have no problem with the commercial designation of it. I 
have a real problem with waiving any fees. What, what if the town were to extend the sewer? for whatever cost it is to us, and then we assess. No, no, I'm saying, well, well that's, you, know, what, that's you, really you have what a look of disbelief yeah, but, on you. Yeah, but Mary, but again. Hold on, hold on. If he can do it for 2.4, you're gonna hear me out. My preference all along was if we're responsible for the repair and maintenance, then we should be the one that builds it and charges the privilege fee, which is a, would be a quid pro quo anyway. He wouldn't be give, being a gift for anything. His privilege fee would, would be the cost of us building it. No, and that is half. the privilege yeah. fee. It would be half. Well, it would be half. But then, yeah. it, then it wouldn't be looked at as we're gifting him, you know, um, the right to, we're gifting him the amount of the, the privilege fee. He would have a privilege fee just like everybody else. It would be consistent with how we put in town sewer everywhere. And we'd assess him, and it would be the value of what yeah, it cost we, us to put it in. And then we wouldn't have Chase's question of questioning whether it is worth 2.4. I know yeah, what you're saying. Time. So let's just say he built it for 800000 Now you're comparing the 1.3 for Fokker Road with a value of 800000 benefiting the days in only. I, I follow his reasoning, yeah. but if time wasn't of the essence, if the town has to maintain it and repair it and has oversight and it becomes town, the town should build it and assess him the privilege fee for it. Well, there's only a certain the number of contractors that can do this work in town. So there's nothing to say that his contractor wouldn't be the same contractor that would bid it on our project either. Yeah, but we yeah, would but be, but yes, but yeah, we but would be town, building it. So yeah, but the we, town doesn't build sewers. We'd be con well. <laughs> we would. The we town. We contract yeah. out. Just, right? We contract <laughs> out just like we did for. I know, but Fiskill the oversight and, and the oversight other. and inspection in the design yeah. would all be town. It'd be town specifications, town design, town approval of town the contractor. Approval. Yes, all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they have to be yeah, they, have to be capable of doing the job. Yeah, right. they have Can't to just be, have any. The, the I have, contractor so I have has a question. to be licensed. Um, the those who are against waiving the fee, I have a question. If mm -hmm. we said, okay, this is the fee, would you be willing to give a tiff uh, to offset that cost? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I don't know if it would fall under the category of qualifying well, again, for a tiff. I, I don't know, but it puts the clock way down the road. Yeah. So my question is, if there's not a consensus uh, gelling around the $2.4 million project, is there an acceptance for his consideration of allowing the direct connect to Farquhar Road and being responsible for whatever privilege, privilege fee there is? All fees. Whatever, whatever the calculation tends to be, yes. Because that is called, spelled out specifically in the bylaw. Well, I'll jump in. How can we say no? Yeah, I mean, right. first of really? all, I, yeah, I already made my preference that I'd like to see him tie in somehow. I, 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 I'm not, I still would like to pursue further the, the extension myself. Um, I'd like a little more guidance from council. Like, how many projects of this nature have they drafted contracts for? Mm -hmm. um, one. What is their answer to a challenge that it's not fair and equitable under our bylaws? I mean, um, that, that type of thing. I mean, you had said we don't have, this is like a, a case of first impression. Mm -hmm. So it, it's different than other scenarios, I assume. But you know, how would we deal with that kind of a challenge from a future applicant? If another RV park wants to come in and offer the same thing, I'm sure we would consider it. <laughs> I don't I mean, think we that's have really where we're at. This is, these are, in the future, you're going to see more and more of this because this is how infrastructure is getting built. Mm -hmm. Towns can't afford it anymore. You so you look yeah, for opportunities <laughs> and you look for synergies. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's really what's going to take place yeah, down there. Town doesn't, we, we, we don't pay. Town's never been in the business of putting sewers in. It's always been the developer that pays and yeah. everything. He's the developer. And the, Yes, well, totally, but fees I, include. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I did. Chase, Very. how do you feel about fee are we debating? the FACWA road and all fees paid? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mike. What? Well, I mean, I don't know how, how well that fits into our 
original master plan mm -hmm. for sewer that that uh, Ty and Bond had prepared, and we paid them. Big bucks. Yeah, that for, was five hundred thousand dollars for sewering this area. You know, it's like that doesn't fit in with our master plan. I, I'm just really, really. I wish that we had come together some time ago because this whole project could have been done easily uh, that, that by assessing a betterment assessment right. uh, to to yeah, uh, all of all the, the abutters, abutters and the users and the way it's normally been and done. that way your project would have you know time to pay at a very low interest rate over I guess whatever and why can't we do that now uh, that's why I'm asking I I don't know why we can't do that now. have a public hearing. I don't know what. In well, number one, point. we would have to go to town meeting to get an appropriation. To do what? Oh, for us to put if the sewer? If we were going to put yeah. the sewer oh, in. We well, don't have an appropriation, yeah. so that, and that I, will and, take and some time. That wouldn't fly. That's, an that's, that's another issue. Well, Can we it, do a, it might fly with yeah. that if the entire cost of the project was covered by uh, a right, better that's what I'm saying. I, well, I no, because fly, there will be people that won't want it because they don't want to pay a betterment. They don't want um, another group, won't want development and everything. And the Army so. Corps is not going to pay a betterment. No. Yeah. Well, no. so I, yeah. I don't know about that. I, but uh, well, if I, I just, uh, I, th I think one, you know, if there's you know, he, he's willing, it, it, it's really difficult because if we, if we could just, uh, Get it built. Uh, there's, Get you know, it well, if, it, the, if, if the town could do it, and I agree with Mary, would it, it would be, be, be good because we could spread out the betterment. But we would have done it 10 years ago if the town could afford it. We, we had that study from 2010, and every time it comes up, we can't afford it, we can't afford it, we can't afford it. Yeah. But, and and but now we can't. Yeah. <laughs> and we can't. So, anyways, wait, wait, is there any it? more information that people need that'll for me, no. Make a decision. For me, okay. no. Chase. I would like to know if we do have the power to waive the fee or negotiate the fee. Mm -hmm. Oh, because it's the bylaw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't really see us as, I guess we keep using that term, waive the fee. There is no fee associated with 15 right now because it's not addressed in our bylaws. We wouldn't even know what the fee would be. Um, no, it, these are tie-in tie fees. Tie-in yes. fees. Tie-in fees. Yeah. The, but what would the tie-in? The okay. privilege fee? It'd be one point three million dollars. Just yeah. like Fakra Road. That's what we're yeah, talking about, way, really. It's, it's we're talking about the difference between him building a private right, extension right, so, to Fakra Road right, and okay. paying a privilege fee, or donating two point four million dollars. Right, so it's not estimated. See, to me, okay. it's really not a. Here's where I'm coming from. I don't see us like. I don't see it as a donation on his part. Uh -huh. Number one, but I also don't see it as us as waiving anything. It's basically the equivalent of a privilege fee on Route 15. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting more, even if it's not 2.4, we're getting a million dollars. Of betterment. Of betterment. betterment. So, so my view is we're really not waiving anything. And at the same time, with all due respect, I don't really view that as, as a donation on his part either because he's not paying the 1.3 <laughs> and the other one. I mean, it, both are benefiting. But it, we're not waiving anything, nor is he donating anything. It's basically the equivalent of what a privilege fee would have been. He's give it, going to give an extra million dollars. Mm -hmm. So we're not giving him a gift the way we're well, kind of. It's not a gift if he's giving an extra million dollars. I don't know. I just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a, it's I, I would like to know how many other times Ty and Bond has seen this done. And, um, I don't know how many other you know. times Ty and Bond's done it, but I've done it over 100 times. Yeah, I don't. I mean, we built <laughs> infrastructure all over in my former jobs, and this is how it was done. Right. Developer but, money, public infrastructure, yeah. they design it, we inspect it, we accept it, we move on. Yeah, because but these are our bylaws. I, like, I understand. And, 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 you know, and, when and we, we have to, and I also inquired about whether this ha would be something that would need to go to town meeting. They do not believe so. Okay. Can they when put that are, in writing? He's working on it. Okay. To answer you with Fiskill before, you know, when uh, when those were put in, they were paid by betterment. 
Right, yeah, and the sewer privilege fee um, used to be based on that, but then they came up with the 7,500, mm -hmm. you know, it was based on, I forget which phase. But anyways, I personally don't need any more information to make my decision. Um, if, if the proposal is to go up Fakwa Road waiving no fees or anything, I will be totally on board. But if there's going to be a proposal to waive any fees, I will vote against it. I, I want to clarify something. I said mm -hmm. over 100 times. I've done it a lot. I don't know the quantity. <laughs> well. I don't want to be held. Where's 100? Pinocchio. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've done I, it a lot. I would like to know if, if, if our council has done it, because I'm more interested in the contract and the oversight. Yes. And if something goes wrong, you know, who's, who's stuck right. in that situation? I don't, we have a very good relationship right now. I wouldn't want to see it go south. And let's face it, construction contracts, <laughs> there, there's a lot of lawsuits that are mm -hmm. involved in that kind of thing. I and I just don't want to see the town in a position where it costs us any money. I and agree. I want to make sure Copeland and Page has done this before and we're not, you know, their test case on it. Okay. Because I can tell you if I vote in favor of this and something does go south, there's going to be a lot of residents very upset if we're, if we're stuck with anything. Mm -hmm. So do you want to wait then to make it? I, I, would, I would like to. I'm on the fence. Okay. Mike, um, do you want to? Go fence. ahead this evening. Well, I do. I'm, I'm not on the Jeff. fence at all with Fakwa Road, but I. Okay, so Fakwa Road is an acceptable I, alternative. Absolutely. Okay. But I'm still. Um, but I, I'm still I'm still um, willing to, to to think about 15. Hmm. Well, we can still get those questions for future reference, oh. because oh. I still have the um, question about you know can we waive anything if it's a bylaw, mm -hmm. you know because bylaws are voted on by town meeting. Right. So, Mike, how do you, do you want to wait or do you want to go ahead? Um, I don't even know what, what the master plan for this area was. So without that information, I can't vote. Because okay. my, my position would be that the sewer should be constructed in accordance with the town's overall plan for sewer, sewering this part of town. And we've paid good money to have that done I don't have that in front of me. I, you know, I don't, it's been a long time since I've seen it, so I don't have that information. Uh, so even going up Fokker Road, if that's contrary to the uh, master plan for suing this area, I would be against it because I, I really believe that we should plan. And I, you know, I worked in a town that had 17 sewage pumping stations because they didn't plan. They could have designed, built that whole town with one wastewater pumping station. And they had 17. And that's a maintenance nightmare. So, mm -hmm. just saying. Okay. Chase, how do you feel? I would like to wait just to answer the question about the bylaw fee. Because, I mean, ultimately, where I'm at, I'll say publicly, running it down Route 15 would be great. It would be great for the town. I feel it would be great for you. I just personally feel that some tie in fee should be associated with that. Now, the 1.2 million is that's the max tie in. I would like to see a break go to him for running that line, but I do feel that some tie in fee should be associated with that line. I think the fair tie in fee should be associated instead of dealing, mm -hmm. you know, fair. I mean, so that would be 1.3 on 15 as well. I just want to make sure I understand. That, where we're that's from. mine. Yeah, that's what it would 1. be. One point three on Farqua and one point three for fifteen, notwithstanding his offer mm -hmm. for two point four. If we were to assess a tie on okay, fee, that's and a what privilege I was fee, it would be one. So we're my, looking at my recommendation 3. would be one point three. Yeah, can, somewhere around there, depending yeah. upon can I, the final. Can, okay, can so I can I ask you? We're debating over a million dollars. Can I can I ask you? Was that thirty-one thousand gallons per day based on Title Five? calculation Whatever his DEP permit was DEP yeah well it would have been if it was it was based on experience at similar parks and it was set by the uh, mass DEP mass DEP which would which would have followed title five which is in our regulations right okay which which uh, 31,000 
divided by 200 gallons per per uh, equivalent unit is you came up with what 155 units. That's it's and on multiplied the that by bracket. and multiplied that by 7,500, and that's how you came up with the 1.3 it's million. It's in the spreadsheet in your packet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our next meeting is October 7th. It's in the spreadsheet in the packet. Keep going. It's the last page in the item. The spreadsheet you have shows 30,000. I'm going to update it for 31. There it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have all the questions people want answered. Oh, yeah, it's 150 units, okay. Well, again, be it's going to be updated more. for 31,000. Yeah. And there's an entry fee and a privilege fee that are calculated out. Mm-hmm. Yep. All set? Okay. okay. Thank you, Will. Okay. See you on the 7th. Sorry. We'll see you on the 7th. Indeed. Okay. Okay, next we have correspondence, Mike. Okay. Oops. Correspondence. Uh, September 3rd, uh, Municipal ADA Improvement Grant Program. Uh, we received uh, from... Who is it? Who did that come in from? Uh, I don't know. So it, it's we received uh, details on the grant program for the municipal ADA improvements. Anyhow, on September 9th, uh, we uh, received a letter on annual greetings uh, from the Rotary Club, and on. September 19th, uh, we, we uh, have another um, update from Charter Communication on changes, uh, upcoming changes that will uh, uh, increase uh, the pricing on uh, uh, Spectrum TV Select, Spectrum TV Silver, and Se Spectrum TV Gold will all be increased by seven dollars and fifty percent someday we'll get a letter saying they're decreasing uh, i don't think so <laughs> okay does anyone else have any other correspondence we already voted on the rotary club so okay minutes we have the minutes of september 3rd Okay, Andrea, on uh, page 217. Oh, the path, uh, sorry, the third. Yeah. Which one? Like, the third. The September. Have regular minutes, but is there another page number? What's well, the no. second page of the minutes? It's the second page. Okay. Yeah, don't you have the numbers at the top? Well, I do my edits on a different. Yeah. Outside the back. Page two. <laughs> okay, um, that Mr. Burlingame went over the status of Revezis and stated that the owner, we should insert new owner. Okay. So it's not confusing. Okay, anyone else have anything? Right. I thought this one was pretty good. Is there a motion then to approve as amended? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of September 3rd as amended. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. September 9th. I did have something on that. Where was it? On the um, second page of of 
Um, the minutes, there's uh, a one sentence paragraph that starts out the Board of Selectmen discussed that properties in Sturbridge are showing a greater, it's not a greater tax rate, it's either value or valuation. Okay. The, the valuations increase, not the tax rate. Oh. Tax rate's actually gone down a little bit. Yeah, but the valuations went up. But the valuations went up, so. But uh, yeah, I think the proper word is valuation there. And that's my only comment. Okay. Anyone else have anything? Motion to approve is amended. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Four and one abstention. Chase abstained. He wasn't here. Oh. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Citizens Forum, and there are no citizens. So is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. 25. Can I have that charter letter? Charter. It's got a name on it. Oh, it's